Hello class, this is chapter 3.1 and in this video we are going to discuss general solutions to second order homogeneous linear equations. So here is uh, the second order homogeneous linear equation equation that uh, we've been working on all this chapter. Now the question that I'm going to ask is first Do we always have two linearly independent solutions? So we know by the existence uniqueness principle that there is going to be one solution, but it turns out that we can show that there are two that are linearly independent. So here's how you can see that. So let's pick an A in an interval where P and Q are continuous. Okay. And by the existence uniqueness principle, there is a solution. So that a solution y1, that's a solution y1, so that y1 a equals 1, and the derivative at a equals 0. And it also exists solution y2, so that y2 a is 0 and y2 prime a is 1. And it's pretty easy to see just from this point, this single point, that y1 and y2 cannot be a multiple of each other. So y1 and y2 are linearly independent. Okay, so we know that we have two linearly independent solutions, you can always assume that. And we, we also know that given any y1, y2 linearly independent solutions, y equals c1, y1 plus c2, y2 is also a solution, and that is the principle of superposition. So the question is, how do we figure out what the C1 and C2 should be? And um, so the, the thing is that we already have, this is really the general solution for our second order equation. So we have to, we have two constants, C1 and C2, and we need to figure out exactly what those constants are to get a specific solution. But this by itself is a general solution. Now, one other thing I'm going to introduce here is the idea of uh, a Ronskin. So how do you tell whether y1 and y2 are linearly independent or not? So the Ronskin of two functions of two functions f and g it's just going to be, it's labeled wfg equals the determinant of the of the um, matrix f prime g, g f, f g f prime g prime. In other words, f g prime minus f prime g. Okay, a d minus b c. And this is important because if y1 and y2 are 
linearly independent, then the Aronskian is going to be non-zero if y1, y2 are linearly independent. then this is going to be zero. So it's important when you are writing down a general solution of second order ODE to make sure that the Ron skin of the two linearly independent solutions you picked are non-zero. Okay, and uh, this is just a very simple test. And I think it's pretty easy enough to just check why this is true. Um, let's look at an example where um, the two functions are obviously not linearly independent. So let's say um, x. No, no, that's not quite x. It doesn't even have to be that simple. Let's look at f and uh, kf, where k is a constant. And what do you get? You get that k, oh, sorry, the run scheme is going to be f times k f prime minus f prime times kf. This is just going to be kf f prime minus kf f prime, which is going to be zero. Pretty easy to see. Okay, so another example is to look at w of uh, cosine x and sine x, and you get that this is going to be cosine x times cosine x minus sine x sorry, minus minus sine x times sine x. You can tell that um, the derivative of cosine is minus sine, the derivative of sine is cosine, so that's how you get all these figures. But this is just going to be cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1, which is very not 0. Okay, so the Ronskin is one easy way to check if uh, your two functions are linearly independent. Let me just write. Let me just write down the principle. Principle. Let y one, y two, be linearly independent solutions to homogeneous second order differential equation then every solution y can be written down as y equals c1 y1 plus c2 y2 and the way to to show that actually is as follows. So let us consider one solution to the uh, differential equation, and we know that by the existence of Unigas, Unigas principle that there is a solution so that y of a somewhere is equal to b naught, and y prime of a is equal to b1. Okay, so let's just drop the a for the moment, um, but what we can do is write down the y's in terms of c1s and c2s, so this means that c1 y1 plus c2 y2 is equal to b0, and uh, c1 y2, c1 y1 prime plus c2 y2 prime is equal to b1. So here's what we're at, so we're trying to show that you can express this solution y in terms of uh, y1s and y2s. So our goal is to find c1 and c2 so that this equation works. So goal, solve for c1 and c2. And it turns out that we can write down this in terms of a matrix equation, c1, c2, and this matrix equation should look pretty familiar to you. 
because we have a run skin in the middle here. But y1, y2, linearly independent. So the run skin has determinant non-zero, which implies that the matrix is invertible. But in the end, what we have here then is that we have our values for C1 and C2. Inverse. And this means that we have a Y1 and Y2 that satisfies this criteria. So we can express this solution in terms of Y1s and Y2s. And hence, we have shown that this principle of superposition must be true.